Could we have the roll call, please? Chairman Swift Kayada. Here. Councilor Backer. Here. Councilor Frick. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McKenney. Here. Councilor Mould. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. And the town manager? Yeah. And town clerk? Here. Thank you very much. Time for the pledge. Pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reports and correspondence. Is there any counselor who would like to update us on any particular topic? No. Um, I would like to note, I was unable to attend, but I would like to note that yesterday was the official opening, I guess, of the um, new kindergarten wing on the, uh, of the Pond Cove Elementary School, and I want to congratulate everyone who worked on that process, all the parents and the kids, the building committee, the school board, the superintendent, all the kindergarten teachers, and everyone else who helped make that project a success. So I just wanted to note that we wish them well. It's apparently a beautiful building, and um, I think, Mr. McGovern, were you there? And Councilor McKinney. And Councilor McKinney. So um, I, I'm sure they would be open to having visitors as long as people uh, sign in at the, at the office first. Um, moving on, town manager's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I just wanted to thank our public works department. I was listening to the TV news tonight. They had a, the, the Portland public works spokesperson was on it. He was saying that at this point, they're usually out 10 times a year, and they've been out 13 times a year. And I don't know how many times Cape Elizabeth Public Works has been out, but every time they've been out there, I think they've really done an outstanding job. Uh, you know, with, I've had the occasion to ride in town and out of town and around town, and our roads are, are second to none. And, uh, you know, they, they, they're just doing a terrific job and appreciate the efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the minutes of our past two meetings, do I hear a motion? I make a motion we accept the minutes of, of our last two meetings. Okay, those would be January 12th and January 24th. Yes, okay. Second, been moved and seconded. Any discussion or correction? Seeing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. First on our agenda is a public hearing for um, a malt and Venus, Linus, wine. wine, thank you, <laughs> license for Two Lights Enterprises Incorporated, which is doing business as Ocean House of Pizza at 337 Ocean House Road. This is an opportunity for anyone who would like to speak to come forward to the podium um, and make any comments um, and please if you do so state your name and your address so I declare this public hearing open is there anyone who would like to speak seeing none I declare the public hearing closed and we will move on to item number 97 which is for the license for two lights enterprises is there anything we don't really need an introduction, it's pretty self-apparent. It's a new application for a license from the new owner of the small restaurant at Pond Cove Shopping Center. Do I hear a motion? Move the passage of the uh, a license of a malt and vinous for the, I believe it's Ocean House Pizza. I think it should be named perhaps. Oh, second. Uh, oh, okay. It's been moved and seconded. Can we clarify, is it Ocean House of Pizza or Ocean House Pizza. I was going to ask that question also. Ocean House Pizza. The one, uh, the Ocean House Pizza. Yeah. Because okay. on Ocean the application it says that... Ocean House of Pizza. Mm. And actually, the applicant is Two Lights Enterprises Inc. It, the Ocean House is just a DBA. Okay. Name. So there's no problem with that. Okay. Um, any discussion? More of a question, Robert. I guess. I noticed part of the uh, in part of the application that listed or asked where the nearest church, school, et cetera, was. And is there a restriction on how close a person can have um, 
alcohol served for the school? I think the town clerk. No, 500 feet. It's 500 feet. All right. From the main entrance of the school to the main entrance of the business, the proposed business, and it has to be the regular walking route, not as the crow flies. All right, good. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion or comments? Okay, all in favor? Seven, opposed none, it's unanimous. Congratulations, thank you very much. Next item is item number 980405, which has to do with the transfer of the compost operation at the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Center. Would Mr. Malley like to introduce this? Yes. <laughs> it's amazing how he threw his voice over to the manager that way. <laughs> um, for the past four years, we've outsourced the operation of our leaf and yard waste at the transfer station to a company called CD Compost. Uh, the relationship has worked very well. It saved the town uh, countless personnel hours in uh, managing the, the piles, turning the piles, marketing the compost. And uh, CD Compost you know, did all that for us and marketed a saleable product. We'd like to continue that relationship with uh, William H. George Farm LLC, who's essentially going to be performing the same operation that CD Compost did uh, for us. Uh, I believe the agreement you have is a five-year agreement uh, in front of you. Um, feel free to ask any questions in regards to how we handle this. So we've had a very good working relationship with CD Compost, and uh, assuming we'll continue that relationship with uh, the new proprietor. Thank you. Questions? Council Roberts. Of course. At some point, will this material have enough value in your estimation that we could get more than a dollar lease on the operation? The problem is in its raw state, it really doesn't have, it's just hard to put a value to it. Uh, it's not screened. Uh, there, are, there can be brush and other uh, foreign matter in it. So it's really not marketable until it's screened. And then once you screen it, you have money invested in it. And the second so, question. Part of it said that the town did not have to dispose of the, the waste that came out of it. Yes. Why wouldn't we? Isn't that still going into our waste stream? Or no, where are they taking actually, that? from a screening operation, there are sticks and rocks and what have you, and uh, uh, the, the contractor would have to dispose of those materials at their own expense. And they don't go into our no, waste stream? No. Okay. We have no reason. They'd have to be landfilled. Uh, so we don't go into our waste stream. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilman <coughs> Fritz. Is the intent to haul everything once it's screened and finished over to the Jordan Farm or just small amounts? It's my assumption that they're going to market the product on well to the property over there. So if somebody orders a truckload, it, would, it wouldn't come from it our could come site. from our it could come from our site, but essentially their retail operation is going to be on well to right. right. If I might a lot of it is purchased wholesale right. and all the wholesale will, will go directly to Okay, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd, I'd just like to say that I, I think that CE Compost did a wonderful service for the town and really made a wonderful product that I think residents have appreciated a great deal to be able to have it delivered to their houses, which we couldn't do before, at a charge. But um, it, it's a terrific product, and I'm just really pleased that the Jordan Farm is um, going to be taking it over, and it, it really makes a lot of sense from their, where they're positioned and everything. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Yeah. Bob, is this the same, uh, basically the same terms under which the, uh, is it uh, CE Compost essentially was performing the same the operation? The plan is essentially the same as what we work with uh, when we work with CE Compost, essentially the same requirements. We're under state licensing with our compost operation. Uh, they need to follow those same requirements. So it's essentially the same program. And will there be a separate agreement prepared? Or is this intended to be the agreement? This is intended to be the agreement. I, I really didn't look at it with, with that in mind. Um, but when you mentioned that it's a, a five-year agreement, I do note in here that under the duration of agreement, it says five years minimum 
with renewal options. It really doesn't say anything about what those renewal options are. I think what, you know, with CE Compost, we, I think the original agreement was three million. And we met at the end of the two-year period, and we flushed out any issues or problems, there really weren't any, and I think their, their thoughts were that they really wanted five years to get a return on their investment, because they are buying some machinery, and obviously the inventory of compost is there now. And I was really more focused on the renewal options part, that mm -hmm. you just may want to be more specific about what that is. Are they five-year renewals, or year-to-year, -year or? I think if I might, we, I think Councilor Back can bring up a good point. We'll make sure that the, the final is, is worded in such a way that gives the community maximum flexibility for determining the, the right of renewal. But it, it, I am also, as uh, Councilor Fritz is, um, very pleased to see that the Jordan Farm, that the Jordan family will be taking it over. I think it's uh, an ideal partnership uh, for the town and the Jordan Farm. Very much so. Any other comments or questions? Just one comment. It looks to me as though we're going to save about $35,000 estimated for the town and at the same time have a, uh, a farm that can, could utilize that business model to help um, foster what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I understood properly and if, if I would know what, what it amounts to. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Do I hear a motion? Make a motion. We accept uh, item number 98. Second. Transfer the conference. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further questions? No, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We want to thank, um, on behalf of the town, I'd like to thank CE Compost for the, work, the good work that they've done um, on this project over the past years, and I want to congratulate the William Jordan Farm for the good work that I am sure they will continue to do. So, thank you. Just if I might, Scott Collins, the owner of CE Compost, just walked into oh, the room. Oh, so. uh, well, <laughs> I was just in the process of thanking you for the good work that you've done. So, thank you very much. Thanks for visiting, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to go if you want to. Okay, item number 99 um, has to do with the rescue. Did you want to introduce this? Yes, uh, yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, we're all very pleased that the rescue, uh, the new rescue came uh, about a month ago, went into service about two weeks ago, mostly uh, donated by Gertrude Royal. Uh, Phil McGoover came to me a little bit ago and said that, you know, the rescue wanted the, uh, the stretcher, the stair chair, and the, the radio to go to the new rescue. And I said, well, wait a minute, the council hasn't authorized the expenditure of those funds yet. So uh, that's why I for you this evening. Uh, uh, captain, excuse me, Captain, former captain of the Engine One, but now the treasurer of the rescue, uh, Dr. Uh, Dick Mainville is here if you have any questions specifically about this equipment. But the money comes out of the town rescue to fund this and uh, we'd ask that you approve this and get this necessary equipment for the unit. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I would move um, uh, to authorize the purchase of the um, stretcher, the stair chair, and the Motorola radios as outlined in our agenda package. Is there a second? I moved and seconded. <coughs> any questions or comments? I have a, a question. So just to clarify, the old rescue truck is being retained? Let me, it's actually, thank you for asking that. Uh, there's actually uh, three rescue units involved. There's the, the current backup one, the current main rescue, and this new rescue. The new rescue will go into the first line of service. The rescue that has been the first line of service is now down at Yankee Ford getting some repairs, and that will come back as the second line of rescue. The third rescue, which is a 1985 rescue, uh, the rescue company, uh, all of these rescues have been donated with, with funds from citizens. They decided in, in the interest of, since it was donated, that ought to continue to be 
used for good purposes, uh, that we ought not to profit from it. And they advertised it to towns all over the state through the, the main EMS newsletter and a couple other sources, and actually got letters from different communities that wanted it, and it's going in early March to the town of Aurora, uh, which is just uh, east of Bangor, up around the, the Beddington Lakes region. And, uh, you should call the old airline route. Yeah, at least uh -huh. the airline route. Bangor and Calvary. Route 9. Yeah. That, that rescue vehicle is a 1985 vehicle. The 1985 pressure will stay with this vehicle, as will the one radio that is in this vehicle. And the their chair looks like a, a lawn chair that you might take to the beach in the summer. And it has been replaced by a new stair chair that has a glide Thank you, Dr. Mayer. Are there any other questions or discussion? Thank you, Dr. Mainville, for <coughs> the uh, service that you and the rest of the rest of the rescue unit do, and also for your generosity in donating our old rescue unit to a community that sounds like they really need it. Shall we move the question? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The next item is how appropriate that this is item number 100. Somehow the alewife fishing rights seems as though it should have a, a special number on the agenda. Would you like to introduce this, Mr. McGovern? Yes, uh, the council spent a considerable period of time on this, I believe, <laughs> prior to the 2004 agreement. I don't know if it went back to 2003. But anyway, this is the same agreement, mm -hmm. the same regulations as in 2004, except the date has been changed at the top. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? So moved. <laughs> How about a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Seven, it's unanimous. Thank you. Our next item is item number 101, which has to do with a new comprehensive planning committee. Uh, would Maureen O'Meara, our town planner, like to stand, step forward and introduce us to this talk? Um, I don't know how much time you want me to spend in this, so I'll be very brief mm -hmm. and I'll let you ask some questions. Okay. Be um, fine. The current plan that, you, that the town of Cape Elizabeth operates under dates back to 1993. The town has a practice of updating its comprehensive plan every 10 years, so we're, we're a little overdue for a new plan. Uh, we have the new data that's available from the 2000 census, and the recommendation is for the town council to establish a comprehensive planning committee uh, charge it to draft a new plan to present to the town council for adoption on approximately 18 months from the date it begins its work. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. O'Meara? Um, excuse me, I had one. Um, Maureen, I had a concern about the size of the um, planning committee. I thought it was a little bit small um, and thought perhaps um, maybe 11 or even 13 would be better, just from the standpoint that having meetings and sometimes two or three people don't show up. So, um, I, and I thought, I guess it would make sense to me, out of um, nine slots, there's only one for the planning board and one for the town council. And I thought that if the town council has to approve it, it might make sense to have two counselors on it and two members of the planning board at a minimum, but maybe even 13 is the right number. I'm just 
a little concerned that nine might be a little too small if you have a meeting and three people can't show up for some reason. So. Do you do you have any response yeah. to that? The composition of the committee is, is up to the council. It's your discretion. Uh, I'll just tell you that uh, most literature on committee size and meetings tell you that once you make a committee larger, and in fact the opposite happens, that most people will start to say, well, it's okay if I miss the meeting because everybody else will go. Uh, we had a committee of nine members to rewrite the zoning ordinance, which I think is a pretty pretty awful task for, to ask citizens. <laughs> we had pretty excellent attendance with nine members. So you know, if the council feels that they need to broaden the representation, certainly that would be a reason to expand the committee size. Um, I would caution you, however, not to make it too big. Um, I really do think 11 is, is an outside number. Um, lots of planning literature will say that if you're concerned that you don't have enough uh, inclusiveness in your committee, you can create some subcommittees that uh, grant opportunities for people to get involved. But uh, keep in mind, too, we'll be sending out packages, and the larger you make it, the more photocopying you do. But um, I have have heard that the council is very, very interested in this project, and I think that's wonderful. The last committee, I don't think, had any town council representation on it. Um, I would offer that uh, if the council wants to expand its representation on this committee and you want to increase the size of the committee to try to keep it at an odd number so that we have an opportunity to break ties, and also uh, I'm in the interesting position of having two planning board members who are exceedingly interested in uh, participating in the comprehensive plan. So um, I would advocate for another planning board member just so they don't have to fight it out. But. Councilor Fritz. I, I, would, I had the same reaction as Councilor Lynch that um, 11 would be a better number. And I think traditionally, at least, maybe I, I was on the last comprehensive planning committee and I was thinking there were conflicts, but maybe it's since then, we've, every committee, I think, has had two councils, um, and I would think two planning boards. So, um, and I don't think 11 was an unwieldy number in that comprehensive planning committee, and I, people did attend uh, regularly, and um, so I would advocate for 11. Any further questions for Ms. O'Meara before we let her sit down and make a motion? Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, I, I just would like clarification as to what we're being asked to do tonight. Are we being asked to approve um, what our town planner has written as the proposed charge to the committee and also move for the formal creation of a committee? Yes, I believe so. I mean, it will obviously depend on whatever motions are made, but I think that's the purpose of this being on the agenda. We, Go ahead. Um, we, we do plan to fine tune the charge at the time the appointments are made in order to put some time timelines in it. I've learned in the past that you don't put timelines in at this point because what happens is you never know when the appointments are going to be made. So at the time the appointments were made, th this may be cleaned up a little bit with uh, a time frame for the committee as well. Did you have any follow up? Uh, uh, no. Okay. I'd have a motion. Yes, um, please. I would move to approve the charge substantially in the form presented here tonight, um, giving the manager and the planner flexibility to make whatever additional changes might be necessary, particularly with respect to dates. But substantially in the form presented here tonight, with the exception that the membership be 11 with an additional um, member of the planning board and an additional town councilor. And I'd note um, for the public, um, we would be looking for four um, members of the public to serve as well. So um, I would use this opportunity to encourage people, if they're interested, to write to us. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further comments or discussion? Okay. All in favor? It's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I want to thank Ms. O'Meara, too, for uh, her work on this project. Okay. 
Next is item number 102, the Spurwink Church Study Committee. Is there anything you'd like to say about this, Mr. McGovern? Uh, I think, you know, there is a report here. I'm glad the council sees it, that the church, you know, it's, it's recommended that it be jacked up off its current foundation, that it get all new foundation underneath, that it receives substantial structure work, it's about $300,000. Uh, before beginning a project like that, or particularly one that like, in all likelihood would be substantially funded with private funds, I think it'd be very good to have a lot of citizen input on really what's necessary and on how uh, it might be paid for. And the recommendation in this case is to have a nine-person committee uh, with uh, seven citizens and two members of the committee would be members of the town council as well at the time of the appointment. The, Committee would be staffed by Ernie McBain, the facilities manager, and Deborah Lane, the assistant town manager. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I'll move the um, charge as proposed, with, um, but I'd like to make an addition to uh, the first item. Um, it, the first item says review, th this is a charge of the committee that they would review all relevant material and seek advice. Seek advice uh, relating to the condition of the Spurwink Church. And I'm concerned that the advice that, that they would get would be really, um, very credible historically um, because it is on, on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. So I'd like to amend that to read, review all relevant material and seek advice from consultants knowledgeable in historic preservation related to the condition of the Spurling Church. So that's a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carol, would you accept a friendly amendment to say including so that it's inclusive, but they can still seek whatever just plain old construction advice they might also be looking at. Sure. Okay. I mean, I think they need a, a variety of advice, but if in reading the report that we have, there were um, some alternatives to choose from. Um, some being more historically mm -hmm. sensitive than others. And so I think they need to pursue that uh, more thoroughly before going ahead with them. Okay. Well, I'd second your motion. Just as it and was. No, and just First. ask that we have the word including so that it's just more expansive. Okay. And Okay, so, and you're, you're accepting yep. that mm -hmm. um, amendment? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Jack? Just one question. $12,000 has been appropriated for that kind of advice. Will that cover it? We're comfortable with that figure, Ellie? Any other discussion or question? That, that was the intent anyway. And if it's in here, it's fine. Okay. okay. Um, all in favor? Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Next is item number 103. Um, having to do with the planning board, um, which has provided a recommendation to the town council regarding undersized lots. On the agenda, it says it's recommended that this item be referred to the ordinance committee, but I believe there have been a number of people. Uh, I only had heard back from two people, so. Okay. Okay, well, um, do I hear a motion? I will move that, that this proposal go to a workshop of the council. Um, I don't think it's ready to go to the ordinance committee yet. I mean, I presume that, you know, when it goes to the ordinance committee, we've sorted out all the um, 
issues, and I, and I think there are a lot of issues <coughs> that, that we need to think about later. Yeah. I'll second that. For it to go to a workshop. For it to go to a workshop, yes. Is there discussion? No? All in? Sorry. No, I, I'm, but I'm hesitating. I, I read, sure this, I read this earlier, and uh, it appeared to me that the planning board looked at it extensively, and they voted six to zero in favor of um, this proposal. And the proposal essentially is the lot size of uh, the minimum building lot size be reduced from 10,000 square feet to 7,500 square feet, and that that um, affordable housing be required to build be built on that reduced lot. I hope I'm understanding that properly, but if I'm not, go ahead and clarify. Well, I, I just wanted to say, you're right, they did. I watched the planning board meeting, though, and it was clear um, from the discussion that they recognized there were a lot of policy issues, and I think their 6-0 vote was to say there are a lot of policy issues, but let's send it up to the council so the council can look at the policy issues. So I didn't view it, at least just watching their vote as a wholehearted endorsement of it, but rather they thought it was something we should take a look at. And there are a lot of issues. Yeah, and I've read some emails going back and forth, and I was, that's what I was wondering about. That's what I was curious about, because it looked like they approved it wholeheartedly. And, and, and that's, so maybe, maybe it is a good <coughs> workshop. I wanted to bring that up. Okay, any other comments or questions? The motion is to send it to a workshop. It's been seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And I presume at the end of this meeting, we'll try and figure out which workshop date. <laughs> but we won't try and deal with that now. Okay. Um, the next item is item number 104-0405, having to do with the Planning Board's recommendation to the Council regarding um, the VA District Wetlands Regulations. The, the recommendation of the manager, I guess, is that this item be referred to the Ordinance Committee. I would move the BA District Wetlands Amendment be referred to the Ordinance Committee for further consideration to be brought back to the Council. Second. I moved and seconded. Any discussion? Council Fitch. Again, I'm not, I'm not sure that I mean, we have really not discussed this at a workshop. This was a proposal from a resident we're required to send it to the planning board and so now it seems to me it's time for us to discuss it not to go to the ordinance committee um i have some concerns about it um because the wetlands ordinance was developed with really pretty scientific um based on soil and vegetation and all those things and it seems to me that a business district should not have to not have to comply with something and be able to to go closer to a wetland when residents cannot and uh, will we then have a whole disruption of the entire wetlands ordinance if, if this were approved so i i think we need to discuss it and and study the implications of it okay any other comments yeah, yeah i um, i tend to agree with Councillor Fritz, I'd actually like to see us discuss it and vote on it now. And my recommendation is going to be that we vote against the proposed amendment rather than even bother to send it to the Ordinance Committee. I, I would tend to agree with that. And, <laughs> and this, this came about through um, a request of you know, a specific business owner um, in town. And my understanding is, is that that business owner is proceeding with um, 
her immediate plans to sell a proposed lot and that her plans fit pretty neatly under one of the existing exceptions to the ordinance um, as it currently is written. Um, and I just don't see any reason to make any effort to expand the opportunities to reduce the wetland setback when we don't have anybody, uh, we don't have any residents currently asking us to do so. Um, and there just doesn't seem to be any compelling reason to amend it at all at this point. So I'm not sure why we'd even send it to the Ordinance Committee unless somebody on the council sees some compelling reason why this amendment seems to be a good idea. Mary, I guess I was originally of the view that it should go to the Ordinance Committee that we ought not to do everything by full committee of the council, but um, seeing as how significant concerns have been raised, I would rather have a workshop than vote on it tonight. Um, unlike the previous issue, I thought that indeed the planning board had endorsed this as something that they didn't have a problem with, so I would be hesitant without more information um, to, to vote against it tonight, but I would certainly support it going to a full workshop if we need to do that. I would also be happy for it to go to the Ordinance Committee, which I know you're a member of, um, and, and I would encourage Carol to go to the Ordinance Committee and discuss it, but either way, I would be concerned about voting it up or down tonight because I would want to have more information in light of the Planning Board's vote on this issue. We've got three different schools of thought here. Councilor Roberts? Is there information that's perhaps available without having to go from one more item to a workshop? And I don't mind withdrawing my motion, per se. I was going to vote against it anyway, because it did not include residences as to be considered. The only thing I, if it went to an ordinance committee, I was actually going to bring up the fact that under a current language, there is nothing in there to allow for the mitigation so that if you've got extenuating circumstances or you can reduce wetland impacts by doing by doing something that would mitigate it, there's nothing in the language that allows that. So I was going to push for that while we had it on the table, but uh, I certainly don't mind withdrawing the motion. I don't mind voting tonight. I hate to see another item. I don't know, don't know that we really need to take it to a workshop. I think the consensus is probably pretty clear that if there's nobody pushing this to be done, that most of us would just assume vote it down and get rid of it right now. But why worry further down the road? Somebody comes back with it later down the road and we can bring it up. But well, can, before we vote it down on the merits, I guess I'd, I'd like to maybe see in writing that the business owner who first requested this no longer is looking for this. Um, yeah. Go right. ahead. The, the business owner would still like to see this amendment even though she is able to move forward with her current plan based on another provision uh, in the zoning ordinance that does permit her to go forward with her immediate plans. But she still has asked for this to be considered. And you know, it, at one point, as you, you might recall, uh, there was a discussion of you not referring it to the planning board, but for that same reason, the council decided to forward it to the planning board because of uh, the applicant's desire that uh, she get her, her day in court. Uh, you know, certainly if the council wishes to, uh, you know, stop the process now, that's within your rights to do. Uh, you know, I, 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 though I would like to suggest that it, it helps, you know, once in a while, I think on, on an exceptional issue, it's good to have a workshop, something that has wide community views. But beyond that, I think it's important as much as possible to use the regular process uh, for the review of ordinances. Uh, as it now stands, any ordinance amendment takes about nine months, any amendment to the zoning ordinance. By the time the council gets it, it gets referred to the planning board. The planning board considers it. It comes back to the council. It goes to the ordinance committee. It comes back from the ordinance committee. It, it is then set for public hearing. It then takes 30 days to take effect. It's a real long process. I think if we get in the habit of, of the unpredictability of, well, is it going to go to a workshop or is it going to go to the ordinance committee, all ordinances, uh, you know, reviews become problematic and less predictable to all those involved. Not to mention, 
you know, the, uh, from a, the staff point of view, it's all that many more meetings the planning, the planner needs to attend, the workshop, as well as the ordinance committee meetings. And I would hope that the council, you know, if it's your, your desire to either kill this uh, or to refer to the ordinance committee, but I don't see where this rises to the level of, of needing full council discussion. All council members are always welcome at uh, ordinance committee meetings anyway. As are members of the public. Everyone. Um, Jack. When the ordinance committee had briefly looked at this earlier, it was our understanding that it was no longer needed, and we had asked if there was anybody still asking to have this done, and no one ever got back to us. So we assumed that the request had just died for lack of interest. Um, based on what the town manager just said, if there is somebody still interested in it, and I'll leave my motion on the board, and we can vote on that. And if it doesn't carry, then we put another one out on the board. I get on the table to be considered. Further discussion. I, I just want to say that um, in any of these considerations, just because it's one citizen or a small group, and, and uh, people aren't knocking down the doors to get something done, doesn't mean that we shouldn't consider it in a reasonable fashion. It's not a reason to. To deny it, and, and that's one of my concerns. And the the other is that um, I think we have to give some credence to the planning board. If they're voting six in favor and zero against, I think that they heard the arguments, they looked at it carefully, and I think they're reasonable people. And we're counting on them for for advice and consideration of issues then I think we need to give it some credence. Whether it's to put it to the ordinance committee or something like that would be fine. But I, I'm concerned that we um, not put down a motion just because we don't have an overwhelming public uh, display in favor of it. Okay. I will weigh in. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Council Smith? Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I dreamt something, but I... <laughs> I thought I saw something that came from the planning board maybe a month and a half, two months ago, saying they were not in favor of this. Was okay. Now the conservation committee, the conservation, the, the town, just to those who might be watching, the uh, town planner indicated it was the conservation commission that was not in favor. Unanimously opposed. So the conservation commission was unanimously opposed. Yet the planning and the planning board knew that. Yes. The planning board was unanimously in favor yes. of this when they forwarded it to us. <laughs> yes. Council Fred, well, because it was it was referred to in here, but it wasn't part of our package. No, um, the conservation. I mean, this. Uh, I, I don't remember what the reasons were. The conservation commission has no official role in a zoning ordinance review um, because this was a wetland issue. Um, Councilor Roberts specifically asked that the Conservation Commission provide feedback. The Commission was understandably interested in this particular item and probably would have provided feedback even if you didn't ask. So they provided, they, they reviewed it and they made a recommendation which was sent to you. It was also copied to the Planning Board, but it was really an independent recommendation responding to a Council request for their opinion. The Planning Board was well aware of it was a little reluctant to totally ignore it, but they looked at the other issues and made a recommendation in favor of this amendment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Lynch. Um, I think we still have a motion on the table to refer it to the Ordinance Committee. Yes, we do. I think that would satisfy a lot of what people want to have accomplished tonight, which is Carol wants more information. Uh, David has some concerns. I want more information. I don't feel I can vote up or down. Uh, Paul has said he'd like to consider it and have more information as well. So if it goes to the Ordinance Committee, I know I'm not a member of the Ordinance Committee, but they're always um, very welcoming when I come. Maybe they shouldn't be, but they are. And um, they're, um, So I would just encourage us to refer this to the Ordinance Committee and then anyone who wants to participate in the Ordinance Committee can go visit with the Ordinance Committee and then we can have a vote up or down on it next month, which I think the person who requested it is at least entitled to as a matter of courtesy. 
Councillor Backer. Well, and, and, then, as, and then I'm going to make one more comment and we can move the question because we have a lot. And, and as a member of the three member ordinance committee, I'm happy to have it referred to the ordinance committee and consider it and report back. Um, I do want to clarify that my opposition uh, to the amendment uh, to the ordinance is not simply because the current, the property owner or the business owner seems to no longer have an interest in it. Um, it's based on the merits of the amendment itself. But by all means, um, let's go ahead and send it to the Ordinance Committee. The Ordinance Committee will consider it, report back, okay. and we'll do it promptly. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to wait. I think I'm going to cut discussion. So I'll, I, I mean, I'd Fritz. just like to quick clarify that I'm not really seeking any more information. I don't think the merits of this proposal are proper uh, because I think the process, we went through the evaluate wetlands in the past, was extremely thorough and, I mean, I don't think we also need to, I mean, maybe the planning board was unanimous, but the conservation commission wasn't unanimous in the other way. I, I disagree with the, the manager, I guess, in the idea of workshops before or that the ordinance committee should see something before the workshops because I think the whole council needs to consider the policy. And I view the, the ordinance committee as more working out the wording after we've decided the policy rather than the, the other way. But, um, so I'll be voting against sending this. I'm not seeking more information. Thank you. Um, just to weigh in for myself on this issue, I had no idea there would be this much discussion on this one. It just goes to show you can't predict sometimes. I think that we have had a citizen who has petitioned their local government to look at this issue, so I think we should go forward with it. I was almost persuaded by Councillor Backer and um, that why are we looking at this if nobody even wants it anymore, but I hear from the manager that there is still some interest. I would like to follow the usual process of sending it to the Ordinance Committee because I think um, I see their role as a, a little bit broader than Councillor Fritz does uh, to identify the key issues. There's an opportunity for any or all of us who are not on the Ordinance Committee to go and weigh in and listen and you know, offer comments. Um, I hesitate to have us send issue after issue after issue to the workshop process because I think it, it adds too much sometimes and um, I think it can be laborious. So I respect, respectfully disagree from Councilor Fritz's, Fritz's opinion on that one. I'd like to move the question. The motion is to send this to the Ordinance Committee. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? Councilor Fritz. Thank you very much. This will be sent to Ordinance. making a note here. Madam Chairman? Yes. Councilman. On the next block of items, is it appropriate to make a motion to handle them as a block? You may certainly make that. Second. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to handle items 10504-05 through 1120405, all dealing with Fort Williams Park use requests as a block. You already had your second. Okay, it's been moved <laughs> and seconded. If I may further make the motion then. Uh, uh, well, we have, to, we have to vote on that oh, one, that's I right. think. All, all in favor of vo voting on them in a block? Uh, <laughs> if okay. we can amend, can, can we amend them? I mean, we can amend the motion. I guess. Let's, ju let's try all in favor of dealing with them as a block. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Yes. And Councillor Moles, you wanted to. Okay. Now, motion. if I might make the uh, motion, uh, it is moved that Fort Williams Park be used for the following requests: <coughs> requests put forward by the Cape Elizabeth Little League, uh, by the Multiple Sclerosis Society Walk for April 10th, 2005, uh, approval of high school graduation on June 12th. 2005, 
uh, use by the Portland Amateur Wireless Club on June 25th through 26, 2005, use by the Portland <coughs> Symphony Orchestra on July 2nd, 2005, use by QVC on July 15th, 2005, with uh, setup on July 14th, use by the P Portland Yacht Club on August 13th and 14th, 2005, and the Engine One Art Show on September 4th, 2005, with a rain date of September 5th, 2005. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It's, it's been moved and seconded. Mr. Yeah. McGovern? I just wanted to clarify on item number 106, the MS walk. That's only for the Fort Williams Park use, and it's not for the roof of the walk. The Chief of Police, very specifically, has not approved the proposed roof of that walk. In that letter. Okay, with that clarification, thank you. Any further comments, questions? Councilor Fritz. Um, there's one proposal that um, that we tried to feed to uh, the QVC proposal, and it's really the only one that's a commercial venture, I guess. Um, I'm just thinking that since they were here, what, two years ago? No, they were here in 97, and we, uh, the fee was $2,500. I would think eight years later, there might be an inflation factor there, and, and the, we're always looking for money to do projects in Fort Williams, um, that maybe the fee ought to be $3,000 or $3,500. Oh, Councilman, I mean... <laughs> Manager McGovern. Yeah, there's, there's no indication here that the fee was $2,500 in 1997. I don't know. In, in fact, Michael, there's an indication. There's a letter from Bob Malley saying that the fee was $1,000 in 97. So I just wanted to point that out. We have a 250% increase in the. Oh. Generally, we look for these type of activities about $1,000 a day. Uh, in this case, it's a two-day event. It's, com it's more commercial. And that's the reason that Bob, in the discussion with the Portland Advisory Commission, I think settled on the, on the $2,500. Okay, I guess I... It's on page two of... I well, it says page two at the bottom. So, so that when they outlined their proposal, uh, somehow I got the impression that 2500 was what they had paid before. Yeah. I, and that they were comfortable with that rental rate, but maybe they were quoted a rental rate already. Carol, on the, the second, the, the typewritten page yeah. with number two at the bottom, right here, it indicates that it was a $1,000. Okay, I'm sorry. I, mi no, I missed it's that. Quite a, quite I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. I, no problem. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Then let's see who's in favor. All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item number 113, which has to do with the capital improvement plan for fiscal year fiscal years 2006 to 2010. I would hear a motion move that we acknowledge receipt of the capital improvement plan. I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All we're doing is receiving it. So. Okay, hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item number 114, which has to do with sewers. Mr. McGovern, would you like to introduce this item? Yeah, this uh, would do an awful lot of work to rehabilitate sewers. There was an article in one of the local newspapers recently indicating, uh, actually, a, it was interesting, I haven't discussed this with Bob, but uh, I hadn't heard of the the, the woman who was complaining, I, I didn't remember the name, uh, anywhere the sewer back up in her house, but uh, 
unfortunately, we're getting these about once a month now, uh, sewer backups. Uh, we have an issue just in the last couple of weeks on the, the connector next to line field between Tall Pine and Route 77. Uh, it's a big price tag, $5.4 million estimated in 2006 dollars. Uh, I really think it needs to be done and encouraging the council to have a workshop on this uh, Wednesday night of this week. Uh, the engineers are lined up, ready to come and present the study and uh, really go over the details of it. Thank you. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we acknowledge receipt of the town proposal for uh, the uh, sewer rehabilitation plan. And set it for workshop. And refer to the 16th, February 16th workshop. Yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> Any comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. The next item is, well, there's a number of items. I, I would hope that we could, there's one memo in the packet uh, from Mr. McGovern that deals with items 115 to 119, um, but I would hope that we could have separate motions on these. Um, the item number 113, I'm sorry, 114, I'm sorry, 115. <laughs> um, <laughs> has to do with tax funding of the Shore Road, Route 77, Scott Dyer Road, intersection, pedestrian improvements and signalization. Mr. McGovern. Yes, uh, thanks, Ann. Uh, so really pleased that as a result of the tax process this year, the town uh, has the potential to obtain a number of state and federal grants. In fact, uh, uh, five different grants, including uh, Paving Route 77 from the Grange Hall to the Nazarene Church, uh, intersection by Crescent Beach State Park there, uh, to Shimon Overlay Shore Road uh, from Fort Williams Park out here to the center of town, uh, to do Sawyer Road from Pickett Street to Eastman Road for Shimon Overlay, a PM wrap, which is a, a more extensive maintenance operation than a Shimon Overlay, on Spurwink Avenue from Spurwink Church back to Pheasant Hill Road on the back to Caputic. Uh, and to do pedestrian improvements and a traffic signal here at the town center at Scott Dyer Road and uh, Shore Road. Uh, altogether, the, the federal grant amount of this is $2.24 million, $2.25 million. Interestingly enough, I compare that almost to a school subsidy for a year. It's, uh, we complain about not getting much from the state, uh, but in this case, uh, with one fell swoop and for this two-year biennium, uh, we'd receive uh, 80, out of the $2.5 million project cost overall, 89% of it would be federal and state funded and 11% locally funded. And for that, I think we get an awful lot of important paving done. We also uh, fix up an intersection that uh, Maureen was mentioning the other day. It was being discussed and identified in traffic studies prior to when she started as planner here over a dozen years ago as, uh, as, need, as a need needing to be done. Uh, we did not have funded the high school traffic signal. Uh, there was some material in the CIP that we're seeing in the budget, some uh, suggestions of how to fund that. But I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, PAC has seen the need to do all these. And uh, we have the, it's based on traffic studies, based on uh, uh, the estimates uh, from uh, PAC for these different projects. And I would encourage the council to support items number 115 through 118 all in all. Do, you, do I hear a motion? Mm. Did, did I understand that you wanted to have separate motions or a motion for all of these together? Huh. Well, be separate. separate. Okay, then I would move um, that the town council um, respond to PACs, that it endorses the PACs plan to commit $297,500 in federal and state funds for pedestrian improvements and signalization of the Route 77 Shore Road, Scott Dyer Road intersection, and further move to commit $52,500 as the 15% local match, which money um, should come from the roadway drainage account. Second. 
been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Jeff? I am also obviously going to vote for this, but I, I have a question of if we take that kind of money out of the roadway drainage account, what's not going to get done? Mr. McGovern? In, in all these cases, it, it, it actually, a lot of these tie in together. The, we're, we're really fortunate that the sewer rehab plan is coming up. The big, the big thing that's been haunting us in the, in the, the roadway area is, is actually three things. One is the condition of spur and gathering, which is addressed here. Secondly is the condition of running side road and the, coll the, the collapse of the road under it. And third is the Elizabeth Park, which the sewer plan proposes 1.8 million into there, as well as 65% uh, funded by the sewer fund, 35% by the general fund, with no sewer increase or no tax increase. The good news is, because of all these funds, and you'll be, it went beyond our expectation as what we'll be able to gain, we're actually going to be accomplishing more in the next four years than we otherwise thought we could. So, you know, while, while we're not perhaps doing some of the paving that we'd like to do, we consider that the combination of the sewer work and this for a change in our paving program, we might actually be caught up for a change instead of being behind like we are most of the time. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Fritz. Um, I, um, it, it seems that, that Councilor Lynch's motion is putting all of the money together in, in one vote rather than having it separately. No. No, I no it's just no, item I, one. Just I moved. Um, that we would um, endorse the tax plan to commit 297,000, and that um, the town would commit 52,000, and that is just for the signalization and pedestrian improvement projects listed under item 115. Um, yes. Remaining are still items 116 through um, 118. Yes. We'll, we're just going through them separately. Okay. So that's the town center okay. so, uh, I, intersection. Be careful. <laughs> okay. Any further? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of all but this particular one. Um, all of the other ones are really for paving jobs of existing um, roads so that I don't think there's really any controversy involved in them. But the Shore Road Scott Dyer intersection, I think, should be taken. I think it needs a public hearing. I, I think I, I have heard both in emails and from comments from people that there's quite a diversity of feeling about that intersection and about putting in a traffic light, particularly. Um, I, I would like to get input from the public. I think there, that there's a lot of implications for having an, a traffic light. Um, and I would just like to hear from the public. So I, I think I would like to see this one set for a public hearing. The other ones I'm happy to indicate to Pat that, that we would take the money. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, all in favor of item 115? Six opposed? One. No preferred. Thank you. Okay, item 116. Can I, can I just ask what the process is then once we make this indication? Will there be review? Will there be discussion of I mean, there have been three options in a proposal for, you know, readjusting or re designing the intersection. I assume this will come back to the council. Do we talk about what sort of traffic? You uh, will have signal? to approve the plan, and you will also need to approve a, 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 a local state agreement. Yes, we'll come back to the council. So the entire design. Yeah, the council has, you know, when you had an earlier workshop, you did indicate. Uh, a preference on the designs and we would be moving forward on what you've already, the council as a whole, mm -hmm. indicated its preference was. But the, the final design will need to come back to the council. There will be public hearings. 
under the MDOT procedure as well. So there would be opportunity for the public to express their their opinion on the traffic light? Yeah, we'd also want, we'd want to work particularly as well with the abutters uh, right near the intersection, Jones, particularly Jones East, uh, the real estate office, the business office, uh, the bank, uh, the, uh, the Johnson property. Mm -hmm. That answer your question. Um, okay, item number 116, the past funding of the Shore Road shim and overlay. Is there a motion? Sure, um, I'll make a motion um, that the town council uh, respond to PACs, that we endorse the tax plan to commit $401,115 in federal and state funds to shim and overlay Shore Road from Fort Williams Park to Route 77, and further that we commit $70,785 as the 15% local match from the roadway drainage account. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on this one? <laughs> Just one qu another question. Robert. Any idea by, obviously we're not rebuilding Shore Road, we're not adding any wider shoulders, we're merely shimming it, putting a layer of tar down. How long will that last for this kind of money? Mr. Malley, will you address that, please? Yeah, an overlay, normally you'd like to get at least a minimum of 10 years out of it. It really depends on the road base itself. Uh, the last time we paved Shore Road was 1990 or 92. So that gives you an idea of the condition. I mean, there's some areas that are faring better than others, but it really depends on the base on the needs. Shore Road was never actually built to modern engineering standards, uh, but you know, if we can get 10 to 12 years out of it, that's, that's not too bad. Is it, do you figure that's a good return on our dollar? Oh, I think so. Okay. That address the question. Any other comments, questions? No? All in favor of item 116? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Next is item um, 117, the PACS funding of Sawyer Road, the Sawyer Road shim and overlay. Is there a motion? Sure, I make a motion that we indicate the tax or endorsement of the tax plan to commit $145,860 federal and state funds to shim and overlay Sawyer Road, and fix it to Eastman Road, and to commit $25,740 as our 15% Okay. We've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? And moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item 118, the PACS funding of the Spurwink Avenue project. Do I hear a motion? I'd like to make a motion that the Town Council inform PACS that it would like to uh, commit to providing $132,900 as its 15% local match for PACS to provide $753,100 to um, add a uh, preventative maintenance overlay wrap, etc. to Spurwink Ave. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, I just want to say as much as I have um, strongly supported a light, I think this is even more important. The, um, and I just want to thank the uh, manager and, and Bob Malley for all their work on all four of these things. But for anyone who drives down Spurwink Road, that road has been absolutely horrendous, horrendous. So I want to thank you for all of your work on all four of these projects and, and shepherding this grant. Um, in my four years on the council, I haven't seen this much state and federal money come back to the town. So thank you. And I know that the residents, especially the ones that have to drive along Spurwink Road, will be most appreciative. Thank you. Any 
Anything else? I guess oh, I'm, Councilor I'm just wondering whether this, um, this amount will really take care of that road. I mean, it really seems to be um, undermined. You know, the, the base of it is badly undermined. I mean, obviously our number one wish would have been a full depth reconstruction that just, you know, that would have been 2.5 million or something like that. It was, just wasn't in the cards with this tax funding. This is sort of our next best alternative. If they had approved just a simple maintenance paving overlay, uh, that wouldn't have given us much. But this is a, a modified reclamation process and it, it, I think it's, you know, we're getting a good deal from the state on it. But would you mm -hmm. prefer a full depth reconstruction? Most definitely. I, I'm wondering whether it makes sense to sort of do the whole length or whether doing really well a, a shorter distance um, and, you know, concentrating um, the spending. Yeah, I just, I don't, they're not going to fund a full depth, even in the lead, even, even in a shorter phases. distance. Yeah, that, that's not going to happen, I don't believe. If I might, a full depth reconstruction is fully engineered for those standards that you don't like, Jim. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, it is. Widening the road. Well, then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Much wider than it is right never now. Never mind. <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> good, piece, good to know that kind of information. Okay, any further discussion or questions for our public works director? No? All in favor of item 118? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item 119. Uh, this is also addressed in um, the memo, the January 7th memo from the manager to the council. Uh, it is to for the council recommend his recommendation for the council to approve the allocation of previously appropriated funds amounting to $70,960 for the regular paving program and for minor paving and drainage projects. And this is, as, again, as I said, outlined on that memo. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Now we have come to item number 120, and I will just turn to Councillor Backer for a report from the Finance Committee. As the um, Council uh, will recall, um, on, in September of uh, 2004, um, of the then currently constituted Council, uh, Councilors Fritz, uh, Swift Kayata, Moles, Lynch, um, and myself um, individually committed ourselves to limit spending in the next three years to a level not more than the rate of the consumer price index with the exception of voter approved debt and an allowance for additional school enrollment and population growth. Um, Council Roberts uh, voted um, against that resolution at the time. The uh, councilors at the time we adopted that resolution uh, did not define the consumer price index that would be used um, you know, as part of the implementation of that, that pledge or resolution. Earlier this year, the first week in January, we met with the school board um, in a, for a joint dinner. Uh, we discussed this matter um, a bit, and we invited the school board to join us for a finance committee meeting, which we held on February 3, when we discussed this matter in um, greater detail. Um, and we invited the school board, and the school board, in fact, attended through its representatives and provided us with input um, 
as to the consequence of our uh, resolution. Um, after hearing input from the school board, um, each of the members uh, of the council then attending the February 3 meeting, um, everyone with the exception of Councilor Fritz, who unfortunately was unavoidably out of town, expressed their views on um, what CPI should be the proper measure um, and whether there should be an adoption of a CPI as a measure of limiting spending for fiscal year 2006, which was really the only year up for discussion. At the conclusion of our meeting, there was a vote um, of three councilors in favor, uh, Councilor Swiske, Otto Lynch, and myself, to limit, to make a recommendation to the council as a whole to limit spending for fiscal year 2006 in an amount that would not exceed 3.3% of the spending for fiscal year 2005 um, with an allowance for additional school enrollment and population growth. And that 3.3% figure came from the CPIU, which is the CPI, um, all urban consumers, which is the, the, most pop, the most commonly used measure of the CPI, which um, encompasses 87% of U.S. households. And that 3.3% figure came, uh, was based upon the CPI increase for calendar year 2004, January through December. Um, so based on that recommendation from the Finance Committee at its February 3 meeting, um, I move that the Council accept the recommendation of the Finance Committee um, as made on February 3 to limit spending for fiscal year 2006 uh, to an amount that does not exceed um, an increase of 3.3% over spending for fiscal year 2005 with um, an allowance for additional school enrollment and population growth. And voter approved debt. And voter you approved debt. Approved debt. And thank you. And voter approved debt, second. which was the other exception. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and mm. seconded. Any discussion? Councilor Fritz. I'd just like to, uh, since, as you mentioned, I was out of town, um, I, I had suggested 2.5% um, because that's actually the CPIU, which is for our area. Um, and also, I had also indicated that 2.7 was what Social Security recipients are, is the CPI that was used for their increase for the year 2005. Um, so that seems to me to be a, a lower, more conservative, uh, and more appropriate for our area, um, since we're specifically mentioned it includes Maine. Um, so I, I guess I'm still curious about the reasoning by the other counselors why you would pick something that's actually closer to, um, you know, more urban areas of the Northeast. Uh, is, is, I'm not understanding the thinking. Councilor yeah. Backer. Um, I don't think there's any single answer uh, to your question, Carol. The CPIU is, in fact, the most commonly referred to measure of the CPI. It is the measure of the CPI that um, seems to be consistently referred to in the media whenever there is um, a reference to the CPI. Um, 
we recognized that there was a more narrowly focused <coughs> geographic region um, that had a 2.5% increase uh, for calendar year 2004. Um, which right. includes Maine. Ooh, which includes Maine, that's right. And the other ones don't. Well, um, I don't think so. The CPIU includes the entire country. Um, the CPI, um, I think the CPI Northeast Urban, um, you know, also includes Maine. So I think all three measures, you know, would include Maine, but the one that you're referring to, you know, is just a more narrowly focused geographic region. Councillor Fruit, I mean, Councillor Lynch. Sorry. Could I just add one other thing, Carol, that was, uh, I um, was very um, concerned about your point about Social Security recipients having a 2.7% increase. Um, I was satisfied, though, that, that and I, I asked the manager to do some additional research for me, that we are using the exact same index that the government uses. Now, it may be a different month because the, the timing isn't the same. We're using, you know, the most recent one, and I'm not sure when the Social Security increases went into effect, but it's a different Versus, month. Yeah. Yeah. But I was persuaded to go with the national number because it is the number that our citizens on Social Security, it's the very same index and I thought that in the long run, um, and I realize we're only doing this, I mean, each year we're going to have to, to wrestle with it, but personally, I think we should be picking the same index for the next three years. And the timing may be slightly off one way or the other, but at least it's the same index. So that's why I did it. Um, it and it was largely because of your memo that you sent to the council on what Social Security recipients received that I thought it was important, in fact, to tie it to the same index. But, but you're recommending, the, the Finance Committee is recommending 3.3 instead index. of either 2.5 or 2.7, and it, so it isn't the same. No, it's the exact same index. What's different is perhaps the Social Security COLA changes took place in October, November, so it, I'm not sure when, but Jan it's January. Okay, it's January, and now we've got another month or two, and we're using a later month because our budget year is July 1, so we wouldn't go back in time. It may well be that next year Social Security recipients perhaps receive a larger one, but we're using the same index. See what I mean? It, I'm, perhaps I'm not explaining I, it well, but... If I might, the, the Social Security Index uses the CPIW. Uh, the, the one that the Finance Committee is proposing is the CPIU. The Social Security Index also uses a, a different base period than the one that the, that the Council is considering uh, for the Finance Committee recommendation. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure the exact month of security, but they do not use the calendar year. They, they, may, maybe they use the federal fiscal year, which begins on October 1st, and they, I think they probably ended on September 1st in order to, but they, they use a different base period. Council McKay. Yes. I, I didn't have the privilege to uh, serve in the council prior to the uh, decision that you made back in September, but I'd like to say I, I'm going to support the 3.3 percent cap and the reason why, there are a couple of reasons. Number one, I th think it's important that we do what we can to keep costs down, to keep taxes low. Secondly, I think it's um, important that I respect the other counselors and what you what you committed to, because you know it's important that we keep our word, and that did certainly affect the way people voted in November on the Pulaski measure and so on. And thirdly, um, when the CPI indexes were, or indices were presented, 
the range really was from 2.5% all the way to 3.8%. So I think the 3.3 is a good um, and reasonable course of action based on the ranges that we could have util utilized. The school committee indicated that they really need a 4.1 to 4.8% increase to maintain without cutting back. And we know there's a significant difference between what we're spending at the municipal level versus what we need to spend long term to maintain the infrastructure. And I think the quality of life is very important to people in Cape Elizabeth. So for all those reasons, I think that this is a, a reasonable measure. And even though we're supporting this measure and it's not the highest or the lowest, it's still going to require um, some belt tightening, both at the municipal and at the school um, function. Jeff. Thank you. Um, I guess I was the one that did not uh, vote for the uh, assuming a C CPI index last September. Uh, one of my reasons at the time was I don't think that we should be tying our hands for the future when we don't know what our needs are going to be. But I, I definitely want to make it very clear that I'm not now, nor have I ever, advocated for spending money that is not necessary. And sometimes it's <coughs> it off looking that way, and that has not been the case. But I fail to see how putting on a 3.3% cap uh, in any way reflects property tax relief. The costs are not going away, they're just being deferred. We're leaving, them, we're leaving on the table a lot of items that are going to have to be funded later at a higher cost with interest, in a lot of cases, with interest added on if we have to borrow the money to pay for these things that are not getting done. To me, property tax relief is when the state and federal government start funding the mandates that they put on the, t on the town. And, I, and other examples of property tax relief would be alternative taxes based on a person's ability to pay rather than on the property that you own. Luxury taxes on meals and rooms so some additional money can come back. The sales tax that we had that was uh, drew in millions of dollars from tourists that came up every year. A higher tax rate on, uh, on properties that are not a person's primary residence. So if the out of state is that are buying up the property along the coast and jacking the, the costs up for all of the locals, uh, they pay a higher fee than somebody else who owns their primary residence. By, and by not, and the other way of doing it is by doing, uh, by not doing what isn't needed. And I've been on the council for five years. This is my sixth year, and so far we've gone through this budget year in and year out. And the only thing that we've eliminated of any substance was the, one of the, the annual, uh, semi-annual pickups. And we know that most of our residents truly wanted that as well. With what we're doing, we need to be doing. I don't think we're doing many extra frivolous items at the local property tax level. The problem is the property tax is not a fair tax. And, but by putting on this cap does not address that problem. I feel that we need to know what the true costs are to the government each year. And I know having sat in, the, in an opposite seat wearing a municipal hat, that if we're told to come in with a budget that does not exceed 3.3 percent, we're not going to hear everything that should be in that budget. We can ask the questions, what have you left out, but we're not going to get all those answers. You can delude, people can delude themselves into thinking so, but you're not going to. I respect where everybody else is coming from. I know that, you, that everybody is concerned about Pulaski and wanting to make, assure everybody that we're going to do our best to to limit tax increases, and I want to do that as well. And if somebody can show me where we can make those cuts and come in at less than 3.3 percent, I'll buy into it. I don't think you can show me those costs, but I would buy into it if you could show me a program we could eliminate that would save us the kind of money where we didn't have to spend even the 3.3 percent. But I don't want to put on an artificial cap because I want to hear what the costs are, and it's not property tax relief when all we're doing is deferring the expenses. So I'm not going to vote for it again tonight. Please don't indicate, don't assume for a moment that I'm advocating spending money recklessly, because I'm not. I don't want to spend any more than anybody else does. 
I don't like digging in and paying my tax bill twice a year either. Thank you. Any further comments? <clears throat> Councilor Baffer. Yeah, I think Council Roberts' comments are all well taken. Um, they are all well taken. Um, but I don't think that the only way to provide relief is to provide additional sources of revenue other than the property tax. Um, that's certainly one way. And you know, for the state and the federal governments to provide us with additional funding, whether it's for uh, mandates or whether it's a distribution of funds for other purposes, um, you know, that would be great, but it's not happening. Um, and until that happens, the only way for us to provide any sort of relief to uh, those of our citizens who do pay property taxes is to at least acknowledge that we will not spend unlimited amounts of money, that we will tighten our belts, that we will do without certain things um, in order to make a real effort to ensure that the property tax burden does not increase beyond the current CPI. Um, it's, it's the least we can do. Um, it's probably not the most we can do, but it's certainly the least that we can do. And on the heels of Pulaski, uh, I think the message that was sent to us by not only those who voted for Pulaski, but even many of those who voted against Pulaski was that they wanted us to recognize that some limits needed to be placed on the amount of money raised through property taxes. And the only way for us to do that locally is to agree that we won't spend more money. Any other comments? Councilor Moore. Uh, I'd like to say that I, I agree with Jack's comments. I'd also like to say that I applaud uh, the comments of other counselors, such as uh, Councillor Backer. Uh, and, and unfortunately, what we have to control is what we spend. Uh, we, we don't have control over Augusta. Um, and that's, that's the way it is at the moment. Uh, our residents send well in excess of $30 million each year in state income tax to Augusta, and we only get back about $3 million in our municipal and school revenue sharing. Uh, fortunately, this year we're getting a little bit back more with the tax program, uh, but the real tax break to our citizens down the road is if Augusta can clean up its act and rein in their spending and send money back to us. Um, and I you know, applaud the other counselors for sticking by what they said they would do last fall before the Pulaski vote to uh, restrain their spending. Uh, I, I personally, with the empathy that I have towards what the school is asking for, uh, would have liked to seen us pick the CPIU that was slightly higher than the 3.3%. There's a 3.7% version, because it was kind of nebulous and ambiguous at the time which one of the CPIs use we were going to use, but I'm going to vote to support the 3.3% uh, CPIU and budget target. Okay. Other comments? I too will be supporting um, the 3.3% cap. I made a commitment last fall to the citizens um, that I would do my level best to limit spending to a reasonable amount, and I think that the CPI with the adjustments for population growth, school enrollment growth, and also um, new voter approved debt, I think this is a reasonable cap. If we don't get a hold of spending on the local level, I don't see how we in good conscience can ask other levels of government, the state or the feds, to do so too. So I intend to honor my commitment and vote for the cap. Uh, I'd like to move the question. I'd like to move the question. All those in favor of the motion for the 3.3% CPI cap? Six opposed? Councillor Roberts. Thank you very much. We're moving on. Our next item 
is item 121, uh, having to do with the sign ordinance. Mr. McGovern, did you want to say something about this? Just very briefly, you have a memorandum from Ms. Cabana during the last election. We ran into a number of interpretive issues. <coughs> I also think it's healthy for you to look at every ordinance about once every 10 years, and the sign ordinance really hasn't got the attention that it deserves. And I'd encourage the uh, council to refer this to the ordinance committee. Take, take a look not only at the issues that Ms. Cabana's raised in the memo, but also the, the ordinance in its entirety. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there <coughs> discussion or comment? I guess just one comment I had. Uh, it's always, it seems like it goes to the ordinance committee faster than I'd like to see, though. If I recall, the, um, I mean, we've regularly met with the planning board um, each year and kind of discussed some issues. And there was a workshop that we had, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, and the sign ordinance did come up as one that they thought merited um, some looking at from other perspectives besides just the election issue. But um, some, I think it could use some design standards. Um, so I would like to get some input from the planning board on the ordinance before it goes to the ordinance. You want to address this, Mr. McGovern? I might suggest that I, I'll, I'll send them a memorandum indicating that the Ordinance Committee will look at it. I think the Ordinance Committee has enough of a backlog to be looking at in the shorter term that they won't get to it for a few months. So we can we can send a memo to the board and just ask them if they have any comments to uh, submit them so that uh, they do some presentation. Submit them to the Ordinance Committee? To the ordinance, yeah, through, yeah, through, you know, an in, informal review as opposed to a formal reference to them. We'll, we'll definitely give them a chance. Okay. Any other? That means meeting tomorrow morning is out. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, Jack. Well, you have other things you're talking about. Okay. Any other comments? Let's move question. All in favor of sending this to the ordinance committee? Seven. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, item number. 122 is uh, has to do with paper streets. McGovern? Yeah, the council's had a number of discussions in relation to looking at town owned lots uh, regarding paper streets. The, the council has, has suggested earlier that uh, before certain lots go on sale, we ought to look at the paper streets surrounding them. And what this process, uh, this item would do is. Uh, to have the town attorney uh, work with the staff to in, prepare a draft council order that would abandon some paper streets that are adjacent to some town owned lots. And these paper streets are on Ocean View Road and on Stony Brook Road. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? I, I make a uh, move. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'm not sure what's so funny down there. <laughs> the <laughs> counselor's <laughs> cracking up you're, down you're there. You're asking for a motion. I said, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said, waiting, why is waiting. it my turn? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was um, the thing we're near the end of the agenda. I'm getting whiplash looking turns. left and right and left right. and right. You, you do it so eloquently. So, uh, sometimes I think I'm going to recommend that we have the chair's chair be at one end of the of the day, so I'm not constantly going back and forth like one of those dolls in the back seat of a car. Um, anyways, it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Straighten up, Councillor Lynch. <laughs> I'm no sorry. Discussion. Your all uh, allusion to the bobblehead <laughs> threw you over the edge, yeah. huh? Um, all in favor? <laughs> it's unanimous. Thank you very much. It's late, past my bedtime. Uh, moving right along. Madam Chairman, if I uh, may be so bold to take the council's time for a minute, uh, we had had an item last month that uh, I had thought after discussing with another counselor we were going to bring it back up again tonight. 
but due to a miscommunication, it did not make it onto the agenda. Uh, in order to take an item out of order, I need to ask the council for a uh, permission to do so. Uh, and I would need to have uh, five of the seven councilors agree to uh, hear this other issue so that I can make a motion out of it. Uh, in doing that, do I need to make inform them of what you the could, motion is before I think it would be how good. that work? I think it would be good so councilors would know what they were going to be considering if they wanted uh, to consider it okay. before they vote on whether to take it out of order or not. So um, you could run by us what is your idea yeah. for what La you want Last to month, after uh, some discussion of what to do with some of the proceeds from the town-owned town -owned lot on the north side of the, of the um, town hall, we ended up still having $19,000 left over. Um, and we had had a motion uh, to make, uh, to set aside some of that money for Family Fund Day. Uh, that motion was not passed last month. Um, for me, uh, to bring it up, I'd have to change the amount of the motion and then re-motion it, and, and would like to bring that up for, for consideration. So uh, my intent is to make a motion to authorize the use of $10,000 from the sale of the lot on the north side of the town hall for the 2005 Family Fun Day event. And I'd like to have an opportunity to, to briefly discuss that and see if there's uh, support. But before we briefly discuss that, I'd like to know uh, if the council uh, would agree to take this item out of order. So just to summarize, the item that you're interested, we, we, need, a fi we need five counselors to vote to consider an item out of order. And that item that you would like us to consider out of order is to allocate $10,000 of the lot proceeds for Family Fun Day, which that would need four votes right. to, to pass. So right. basically, um, if the council votes to take this out of order, um, we will need five votes, but we will only need four votes to use the $10,000 if that's what Point of clarification, are we taking an item out of order or are we take, taking up an item that was not on the agenda? It's, and, and I think the latter. Difference. it's the latter. It's taking an I, taking an item out of order is also also includes adding an additional item. I mean, it's just the phrase for it. So it's adding an additional item. It's good and fair to vote that it's technically to suspend the rules to take up an item yeah. not on the agenda. So if counselors who are in favor of the ten thousand dollars, I presume would be voting to take the item out of order if there's anyone else who wants to. We need five to do the first thing, to suspend the rules to take it out of order. We would only need four to um, approve it or disapprove it. Councilor Backer. Uh, I'm wondering if procedurally what, what, what is really being asked is to present a motion to reconsider the rejection of the use of the funds. That would have to be made by a different counselor than Last time. Mold which because would have to be made by somebody who was on the prevailing side of was on, not on the prevailing side. The issue. That's right. And I guess the concern and, and the reason that uh, Michael's in the predicament he is is because he and I talked about it and I had said I would make a motion to reconsider and then I was of the, I had the understanding that in fact that would open up everything else that we considered because it was one item last month so I yeah, I'm, I was I would, it was all voted under one item also. it was all voted under one item so I was advised that it was would not be I wouldn't to open up understand that we would not want to read those sundry all those things. items unfortunately I did not get back to Michael with especially the without of my research notice to the well, multitudes of people who would be interested in all those other subjects the land trust one in particular. So I understand your reluctance to reconsider it that way. So that's why he's asking yeah, for a new item with a new amount. So that is why Councillor Moles is asking for us to suspend the rules. So, I mean, basically what it boils down to is if he's got five votes for um, allocating $10,000 
and I presumed he, every, those five counselors would vote to suspend the rules, and then we'd go on to his item. Or at least to discuss the item. Right. The, the, the issue is But it that. would only take four votes right. past that, so if he's only got four votes for that item, I would think that the counselors who did not want to deal with it would vote against suspending the rules. Well, I, I would support suspending the rules irrespective. I just did say to Michael, I wish that he went, instead of going up from last month, from 9,000 to 10, I'd prefer to see it go from 9 to 8. Um, but I certainly would vote to suspend the rules and, and then let him see whether he has the four votes on Family Fun Day. Hang on one second. They were all in the same item. That was my concern. Yeah. Okay. And, Sorry, I didn't yeah. interrupt it. And uh, the other reason I'm asking to, to do this tonight is I could bring this up as an official agenda item for next month, um, but for planning purposes, because Family Fund Day is in June, if we're going to have it, I'd, I'd like to get the process started if we're, and just let them know whether we're going to be able to have fireworks or not. Okay. So. Well, as I understand it, we've got two people who are interested in suspending the rules. Councilman Kenny. You have three. Th three people interested. Three and four. Are you interested in suspending the rules? Are you interested in suspending the rules? I am not. Um. Because I think we just found out we had four votes for the next one. But so, if you don't suspend the rules, he'll put it on the agenda that's okay. for next month. So why not just take it up tonight? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm willing to suspend the rules for. Okay. Because then I'll consider that with the motion to suspend the rules. And was there a second? A second motion. Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules? Five. Opposed. Six. Oh, six. Okay. Opposed one. Um, and do you want to make the motion now? So I would like to make a motion to authorize the use of $10,000 from the sale of the lot on the north side of the town hall for the 2005 Family Fun Day event. <coughs> and then we can discuss if that amount is appropriate or not. Is there a second? A second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Discussion. I'd just like to say that I received an email recently uh, from somebody who was intimately involved in the planning of Family Fun Day, and they were very interested in pursuing this. These are volunteers, yet they were concerned. They, they thought if they didn't have the financial support of the town, they wouldn't be able to raise the additional funds necessary to, uh, to pull it off in a successful manner and they were considering dissolving their committee, even though they had committed uh, a considerable amount of time and energy in the past. So there certainly is some support out there. There are people that are interested in doing this on a voluntary basis. So I think it, it's worthy of serious consideration. And plus, I think it really brings the town together. It's an opportunity for families and uh, all citizens to enjoy what is one of the finest parks in the country and enjoy it, you know, together for some fun activities. Yeah. Councilor McKenney said it last month, um, and I hadn't really given much thought to it prior to, but we have probably 15 or 16 or more nonprofit groups that are serving the town of Cape Elizabeth that raise a significant percentage of their funds at this one event and by us putting in a eight thousand ten thousand whatever the dollar figure happens to be uh, seed money to make sure that this uh, event continues to go on uh, seems like a, a small price to pay for the, the amount of revenue that the town gets back in return for that uh, it's i don't know if anybody has a handle on exactly how much money is raised over there on any given year but I believe, with all the different uh, 
groups, the school booster groups, the community groups, you name it, there's a, a considerable piece of change raised over there to, to serve the, the citizens of this community. And that was a point well taken, so I thank, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Fisk, do you have comments? Yeah, I, um, I, I, feel I am opposed to, I, I think Family Fun Day is a great event. I love fireworks. I'm a really big fan of fireworks. Um, but to take money from the sale of assets and put it into something that is essentially going in the puff of smoke with fireworks, I mean, I, I really have a problem with that. Um, Council McKinney had an idea for um, creating a comprehensive planning fund with the rest of that money. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'd call it the same thing, but that, that would have a much more lasting um, impact on the town rather than something that's just gone immediately. I, I do think it's a good opportunity for, for our various organizations to make money over there, but um, it seems to me there's an opportunity to raise money in other directions, um, businesses in the town um, to put on the family Sunday and, and continue with it. So I, I just can't support it. I mean, at this time, from this money. Okay. Any other comments? Um, Councilor Backer. Um, I'm opposed to this for a variation on the reason expressed by Councilor Fritz. I mean, I think of sort of a couple sitting around the table trying to plan their finances and thinking, well, we have a mortgage payment due and we have uh, a car payment due and we have to fix the driveway and we have some windows that need to be replaced and we're short of funds let's go to jamaica next month <laughs> let's have a party um, and it just doesn't seem to be a prudent way to spend nine thousand or ten thousand dollars from the sale of um, the lot next door when we have unfunded capital improvements and other long-term needs of the town that we're trying to protect. Okay, thank you. Councilor Moll. Let me address a couple of quick issues. Um, <clears throat> to be able to make the motion, I had to pick a number different than what was last time or else it would have been a motion to reconsider, which I could not make, not having been on the prevailing side. Uh, the reason I picked the amount 10,000 is the, the last month the motion was for $9,000. The fireworks, to, to run the fireworks show and the permit, uh, cost almost $8,000. Uh, this prior year, we ran Family Fun Day, and maybe the manager McGovern can correct me, but I think we spent about $2,000, then the rest was done by donation. So that's how I came up with the, the $10,000 number, $8,000 for the fireworks and the $2,000 level of funding that we had had the year, the year prior. Um, and as, as we said last month, and let me piggyback on what Councillor Backer was just saying, you know, when you sit down to, to, to run a household, you've got your mortgage payments to make, you've got to put a roof over your head. Um, but if you also don't set up date night with your wife, whether it's Friday or Saturday night, you're not going to have a marriage very long. And you're not going to, you're going to have a house, but you're not going to have a home. The town has a $26 million budget. You know, this is the one thing that we really do as a community that brings the community together, all the young people in the community. And I've had a number of groups come to me that said, you know, We'd really like to step up our involvement in Family Fun Day this year. We, you know, they probably get back two to three times what the town puts into it towards donations to their charitable groups that keep them going over the course of the year. I've had a group approach me and said, you know, we'd like to do a chicken barbecue in the evening this year, which used to be the standard fare of years ago, to make it a true day long into the evening event. And considering all that our nation has been through for the past couple of years, things that are pulling us apart, 
this is one thing we can do as a town to bring it together uh, for all of our citizens. And, and yes, you know, it's, it's not the ideal source of the funding for this event. It, it truly isn't. But we have those funds. They really should be spent in 19, I'm sorry, in 2005. Um, and I, I'd really appreciate it if, if we could find $10,000 to, to fund the fireworks and the same as levels we did last year. Now, now I, I obviously need four votes to do that. If, if the fourth vote holder uh, really won't go for the 10,000 and has another suggestion, I'd love to hear it. Councilor Lynch. Well, I think I'm persuaded by what Councilor Roberts said about all of the um, civic organizations that use this um, day. And uh, I have to say, I'm actually attracted by your <laughs> town date night <laughs> analogy. Um, so I guess um, it's one of those rare times when I'll change my vote. Um, 10,000, 8,000, it is real money still to me. And, um, and I think to the town, I would feel better if we were going down the town manager himself last month, I think, had recommended nine. I'm reluctant to go above the manager's recommendation. Um, but um, Well, we're hoping to get a tenth this year because it rains every year on Family Fun Day. That's part of the fun of it. So, <laughs> so um, Councilor Lynch, so are you making uh, an amendment? No, I'm motion? trying to explain to the public why I'm changing my vote from last <laughs> month. <laughs> and I guess I'm not going to make an amendment. It strikes me that in a $26 million budget, um, if Councilor Moles has three votes for 8,000, I'm sorry, three votes for 10,000, far be it for me to insist on a little less. Well, while I applaud Councillor Moles' creativity with the date night analogy, I am not persuaded by it. I think I am more persuaded by Councillor Fritz and Councillor Backer. I think that um, the budget and the financial management of the town is all about balancing important competing needs. And uh, there are many more needs, as Councillor Roberts is always pointing out, truthfully, there are many more needs than there are dollars available to meet those needs. And um, I think that Family Fun Day does not, uh, for me, meet as high a level of need as uh, paying teachers, educational programs, um, taking care of Fort Williams, paving roads, uh, running the library, plowing and numerous other things, including things I voted for last month, which pertain to repairing assets that we already had, uh, that we already own. I feel I need to be a good steward of the town's resources, and I just must say I do not think this is uh, as important. Family Fun Day, no matter how much I enjoy it or everyone enjoys it, I do not think is as important a need as the many other needs that we're not going to be able to take care of. So I will be voting against it. So I suggest we move the question. All those in favor of spending $10,000 of the proceeds of the lot next door um, for Family Fun Day, that's for this, this summer's Family Fun Day. One, two, three, four. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. And now we have come to uh, the portion. Did I ask this at the beginning of the meeting? Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? I think I might have skipped over that. Oh, shame on me. <laughs> well, I don't see any citizens out there that have been waiting all this time, but. This is, there's, this is, they're not waiting, they're talking to each other. But they are citizens. <laughs> this is the second time, first one that I remembered to remind us of, 
uh, for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there's anyone who'd like to speak, come forward. And they're not coming forward. So um, we have one more item on our agenda. It's item number 123, which is an executive session. The council will be retiring to the room, uh, the conference room up back here um, in accordance with uh, MRSA sections section 405 paragraph 6a 6c and 6d to enter into executive session to continue the annual evaluation of the town manager first secondly to discuss upcoming negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association and with local 340 of the Teamsters and thirdly to discuss the disposition of publicly owned property said property being those properties discussed publicly at the December 13th, 2004 Town Council meeting. Do I hear a motion? So moved. And moved? Second. And seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Um, we will not be taking any votes, I presume. Will we, Mr. McGovern? I don't think we would. We will not be taking any, any votes, so we will be turning off the cameras now. We will be going back um, and we will be adjourning after the executive session. I can't say 100% you won't be taking votes, but that land acquisition matter is conceivable that you might. Then I amend my remarks. We might be taking votes, but they will be out here in public session where everybody we'll make can see if the they want to come. Thank you. Oh, also we have a workshop on Wednesday, February 16th at 7.30 p.m. here at Town Hall for anyone who is interested. Thank you. Okay. You know what's weird?